Welcome to Telelab. We are the Telegraph Quartet, and this is where we break apart a piece of music and put it back together. This video will be broken up into two parts, the dissection and the performance. In the dissection, we'll be sharing our opinions on different fundamental aspects of the music. We'll play some examples, show some performance clips, as well as bits and pieces of the score. In the second half of the video will be the full uninterrupted performance of that music. If you'd like, please jump ahead to the performance first and just get a first listening before coming back to the beginning of the video and hearing us break it apart. In this episode, we'll be diving into the first movement of Eric Korngold's Third String Quartet. Korngold was a composer of the first half of the 20th century and was made famous by his incredible compositions in Hollywood film. In fact, he's arguably the most influential and important composers to define the soundscape of Hollywood cinema. This piece, however, stands apart from that fame and was not written for a film. It was actually originally intended for the concert stage and was Korngold's way of marking the end of the Second World War. This first movement is an emotional journey filled with the, the unrelenting angst caused by over half a decade of war. We'll break this movement up into six parts. Angstful theme, a brief relief from the angstful theme, an attempt to break free, the aftermath, coping with the angstful theme, and a begrudging acceptance. Now, I know looking at this list, it must seem like kind of a downer, uh, but if you get a chance to listen to the whole thing, remember, this is only the first moment. So if you get a chance to listen to the whole thing, I promise happiness and joy is only four movements away. Here is that first angstful theme squirming around the first violin part played by Joseph. It makes these attempts to rise. It's kind of up and down, up and down, and keeps going up until it reaches an apex, and then falls and takes us into the next section. And here it is in context with the whole group. So here that discomfort we heard in the beginning and the first violin part now becomes a group response, riding on the turbulence caused by that original anxiety. And now back to the first violin again. But this time, it keeps going higher and higher, desperately looking for a way out. It doesn't quite make it, and ends up falling down and passing it off to the second violin. And then finally, down to the cello. This failed attempt inspires a more tender yearning for a solution. Eventually bringing us to a major chord full of hopeful possibilities. After the relentless uh, twists and turns that we just experienced from the angstful first theme, right here at this part of the juncture, we were granted uh, a really sweet relief in the music. It's like a nice welcoming breeze that just came that was much needed. And even with that feeling, um, Korongo did not pass on the chance of putting just a little bit, a hint of underlying tension 
Um, but it was very sneakily done, and he kind of put it especially in in the viola part um, that has a little uh, twisting notes that that's kind of buried a little bit under the texture that's that seems to be lilting and uh, in a very sweet, innocent way. And now let's hear how it sounds like when the viola part is taken out of the texture and when it's just that welcoming breeze. And now let's add the viola part back in and hear what it sounds like with the underlying tension in the group. The relief we had was, however, a really short one. And not before long, we were reminded again the angst for first theme. It comes back to haunt us. And in the first violin part, just like how it happened right at the beginning of the piece, to remind us that the issue was never solved. It was just briefly forgotten. And it was pushed into our subconsciousness, waiting to resurface again. By now we've been traveling through the piece and Korngold has been taking us through different ways of coping through this angst and inner turmoil um, with various ways of the winding and um, dissonant harmonies. And now it kind of reaches a breaking point where he can't keep it inside anymore. And we, we suddenly have this marking in the piece where things seem like they're going to wind down to nothing. We have a marking subido agitato, which means immediately uh, agitated. And this figure that's very agitated is a quick dotted rhythm um, accompanied with a large leaping gesture. And this is kind of a, a way of just breaking out and kind of, it's like yelling as if a, a cathartic kind of release. And um, this figure gets passed around the various instruments. And that sounds like this. And that will kind of jump around the group. And uh, the other thing we're going to hear within this section is another kind of um, release in a way, which is a falling gesture with a triplet quick kind of syncopated rhythm. We're going to hear that kind of passed and jump around the group as well. After the cello initiates this change of emotion and breaking out of this inner turmoil with that leaping gesture, the viola then responds to my first attempt, uh, and then immediately the first violin will take over and answer the viola. <laughs> Now that we've heard this cathartic leaping theme trying to break free a couple times in various different instruments, we get to hear it a fourth time in the first violin. This time it's going to be more of a struggle. We can hear in the other instruments this kind of pull uh, on it. And it's we're, they're pulling on the theme. It's harder for it to jump up as easily. It's going up one kind of note at a time. And the phrase uh, is extended because of that.
right when the leaping theme is about to break free one more time, something bursts in on the scene that we weren't expecting, and that is our first theme. This winding, kind of anxious theme uh, has transformed into a kind of hysterical, violent version of itself. It's much faster. Uh, it almost seems as if it's trying to pull the emotion of the uh, quartet back into this kind of psychosis from the beginning, uh, but in a much more violent way. And it, um, it comes in these very fast triplets in the first violin. Only to be taken by the viola immediately, and uh, where she kind of twirls around with those same things, creating the same kind of chaotic struggle with that um, uh, leaping theme. And then, and then taken by the viola one more time uh, as she amps it up. Uh, even more. Just as we think the first angst theme is going to take over uh, the feeling of the quartet, take it back, the leaping theme comes back in, in the first violin, Again, trying to free itself of that feeling, bring us to a feeling of positivity. It's followed by several triumphant chords that seem to be leading finally to this uh, moment of escape, only for us to come face to face again with this first theme, this first angst-ridden theme. But here in the viola and cello, played by viola in this example, three very long notes stretched out, kind of searing across the sky, and then three longer notes, basically just proving to us that we cannot be rid of this theme. It is here to stay. Now that we've broken down that struggle between these two emotions, one of depressive anxiety and the other of optimistic desire to overcome that anxiety, let's go back and see how they play out in real time. Now that we have gone through this incredibly desperate version of our first theme and we know it's here to stay, uh, we're left in kind of this desolate place, this aftermath where uh, it, there's almost like been a psychotic break and we um, find the first theme kind of dancing around, giddy, delirious, uh, in the first violin in this kind of um, triplet-like version of itself. As it progresses, um, 
it, it starts to feel like, you know, we're just going to have to live with this theme. There's one last attempt to kind of tired, uh, exhausted attempt to, to struggle against the um, inevitability of living with it that uh, comes out like this. just brings us back into our uh, first theme in its original form, learning to live with this psychosis, with this upset, um, almost maybe perhaps liking it a little bit, enjoying it a little bit. The twists and turns are still there, but something has changed. It's, it's as if uh, there has been an understanding or a revelation some, somewhere along the journey. And we hear this because, well, the melody's still there. You still hear that struggle, but somehow it doesn't feel as intense. And partly because he adjusts the rhythm a little bit, and also because all the the supporting music around that melody has changed We've now reached a point in the movement where it's coming to a close. We're effectively at the code of the piece. We know this because it sounds familiar, but it's also more calm and it's, it's feeling like it's going to end. The music has slowed down. Uh, we hear similar music, but much more drawn out. Uh, there is a bass tone that's held that kind of gives a, a kind of warmth and a comfort to it. Um, through this whole journey through the movement, learning how to cope with all these various things, we feel like at this point we have gotten to a place where it's not necessarily resolving an issue, but it's learning how to live with it. There's a sort of begrudging acceptance that we've gotten to. This concludes the experimental portion of our Telelab episode. And before I go on and show you the performance clip of the whole first movement, we just want to say that it has been so rewarding for us to explore this composition from more of the emotional perspective of the piece and thinking about the topic on anxiety and the different ways of coping with it, especially, is that something that we can all relate to so much in the last year or so. 
And now here is a performance clip of Congo String Quartet Number no. Three, First Movement.
Thank you for watching this episode of Tello Lab. Please don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook and on Instagram. We'll see you next time. <laughs>